Yo, bro, stop. Stop looking at my work. Come on. I was just admiring your cursive writing. <sighs> no, you weren't. What did you write for number one? The future of media. I wrote photos because photos are the future, okay? They're worth a thousand words. One whole thousand words. No, photo. No, you didn't. You wrote short form video content. And you, you put it in a heart. Yeah, that's what you would like to think. Sir, I have morals, okay? I would never ever steal someone else's idea and then implement it in her own system and then profit off of it for our shareholders. That's just not who we are. Really? I know a lot of people think IG stands for intellectual property grabbing. Well, it doesn't, okay? You know what it stands for? It stands for intellectual guy. Me, I'm that guy, okay? I instantly regret this sweater choice. Let's fix that. Oh, that's better. Also, new merch. I'll be talking about it at this point in the video, but more importantly, let's get to the title of this video. Social media algorithms, we're talking TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube are making us way less creative. They are killing our creativity. An essay by Chris Howe. Let's talk about it. When did we all become so obsessed with chasing followers, likes, comments and just like validation from strangers on the internet. And I feel bad because I know that like my top videos on this YouTube channel contribute to like us wanting to grow all the time. But let's just like take a step back for a second. I'm a creator. I identify as a creator. This is my job and how I make my living and it's one of the best jobs in the entire world. But as of recent, I've really noticed that the apps that we use to share our creativity are changing and they are reprogramming us. And somehow some marketing experts in Silicon Valley and China with their entire engineering team that builds out some little code around algorithms is literally changing the face of creativity in 2022. See, the thing is we've gotten so comfortable as a society that when we see a successful piece of content on social media, we want to make our own version of it so that we can collect that clout and just jump on the bandwagon of success and make sure our brand is being seen 24 seven because that's a good thing. TikTok likes to call this trends. For example, remember that Julia Fox thing? Like, I got jab, I got jab. Even I'm doing it right now because it's a trend and everyone made the same video where they just mouthed her impression and went, Anka Anka jab. and they did, did the face. Saw 40 of those videos in one day, 40. I should be doing other things with my time. Now there's nothing inherently wrong with seeing an idea and putting your own spin on it or creating your own version of the trend. That in itself is actually a very creative process. But the thing is, is that we accept stealing an idea is the norm now. And when I'm on those apps, I feel like I see more stolen ideas or trended ideas than original ideas. We already saw this on Instagram because one person posts a sick photo of a location and literally every other person's like, I'm going to do the same thing. Then when someone finally creates something that feels original, one of two things happens. Number one, they post it and people are like, no, this is different and weird. Even algorithms are like, I've never seen this before. You know what? This is risky. Let's just like kind of push this away. And all the this effort that you put into the original content just like never gets recognized. Or somehow you create something original and the super one in a million chance happens where your thing gets picked up and everyone's like, oh, bravo, bravo, monsieur. I don't know why I became an Italian French man, but essentially everyone's very excited. And then all of the big accounts from around the world steal the idea, make their own trend on it. And then those people literally get to ride your success. I literally saw this with another account that I followed that I mentioned in another YouTube video one time. His name is Bach Visuals. He created this like very unique way of shooting cars that like I have never really seen before and it just took off. He got a ton of new followers from it. And then now for every automotive account that I follow, including some like high fashion men's lines and uh, in, uh, influencers. I don't even like saying the word influencer. I can't even say it. Other big influencers. That was naughty. That didn't feel good. I've seen it on their accounts, this idea that Bach originally created. And it just, it just feels icky. See, I've been on both ends of this. I've stolen ideas that have been successful, but I've tried my best to always credit the people that I like at least got inspired from. And then I've also had my original work stolen and I've been trying really hard. I mean, you guys have noticed the skits at the beginning of these videos. And I literally recently had someone steal my idea. That just hurt. 
truthfully, like I'm not going to go and tell you who it is, but if you follow me on Instagram, maybe you know about this or not, but that sucked. I'm not going to sit here all high and mighty. Like, look at, I'm so original and I'm so creative. We all start somewhere. When I started this YouTube channel, I was the wish version of Peter McKinnon. Let me like elaborate on that for a second. When I first started, I remember wearing a backwards hat, riding a one wheel, vlogging with a Joby tripod, doing 120 P slow-mo footage and literally my videos were identical to Peter, both in even my inflection and the way that I would talk would just sound like Peter because I was like, oh, this is what's working for him. I'm gonna do the exact same format so that people hopefully like me. And I remember he sent me a text and he called me out on it. So nice and he did it with so much respect. And he was just like, hey man, all these things together just feel a little bit like my style and you are so creative. You should push yourself to pursue your own ideas. And I recognize now that I was the wish version of Peter McKinnon, but it took me a long time to just see that the reason I was doing that is because his ideas were working, he had attention on him, and if I just stole that idea and did what was working, that means that I would also get success. That was not the case. So on like a very deep and ultra transparent level, and this is gonna turn into like a therapy session right now, so thank you for listening to me by the way. I know now that the reason I was doing that was because I was too scared to show my true self on camera and that it's easier to see what other people are doing, copy and mimic it so that you are not judged by strangers on the internet. And if people start yelling and judging you, you can be like, well, that's Pete's idea. His ideas suck, not me, I'm great. <laughs> and that's a tough pill to swallow, but the moment you can recognize that in yourself, I think you're gonna have a lot more creative ideas because I went through that. So rather than drawing inspiration or your creativity from social media apps and the content that you see there, try drawing it from your own life experiences, from a conversation with a friend, from a walk, or maybe you go and visit a museum. Basically anywhere that isn't a screen blasting content at you that also shows you the likes, the comments, and the attention that that piece of content is getting because that's gonna influence you so much. And on a deeper level, let's start the therapy session again. We're clocking in right now. Find out why you're creating in the first place. The reason why I was creating originally and why I started music and a YouTube channel and bands back in my early days is because I wanted to fit in. I wanted to be loved and liked by the people around me. I wanted to feel like I was a part of a group. And if I did those things, maybe people would like me. And that's why I was creating. And the moment I came to terms with that and switched my perspective, I became more creative. There's a line that I wrote in my Crater Anthem poem that I put out on my channel a few months ago that says, what if the person that you looked up to was you? And this is something that I think about every single day and it helps guide my decision making, especially around my creativity. Rather than doing a low hang bang photo or an easy concept, I am pushing myself to make more original contents and be proud of the efforts that I'm putting into my creativity so that I am the person that I look up to. This is actually a really great segue into the merch that I recently just dropped. This is the Creator merch right here, a person that brings something into existence. This is hand stitched by the way, but more importantly, we have that message on a label, hand stitched on the sweaters. It's right there. That says, what if the person that you looked up to was you? And it's placed specifically there, so on the days that you're feeling down, that you don't feel creative, you're reminded. What if the person that you looked up to was you. Links are in the description if you want to pick up the Crater Collection. We have a hand-stitched Crater hat. We have a hand-stitched hoodie with the label on it. We have a crew neck sweater with it hand-stitched as well as the label on. And we have a t-shirt with it being silk screened. And we have the hand-stitched woven label with the reminder, what if the person that you looked up to was you? Links are always where links are. I heard this quote one time. Are you a chef or are you someone that can follow a recipe? Don't only get caught up in the things that are working. You're gonna be way happier and more fulfilled in the things that you create and put out in the world if you create what you want to create. If you guys like this video, please press like. That stuff actually makes a difference. Subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for future videos. Again, the merch collection is below. Thank you guys so much for listening. And I'm just genuinely curious. Do you guys agree with my thesis? Do you feel like social media apps and the internet are killing our creativity? And what are some ways that you're combating this? How are you staying more original in 2022 with all this information that's constantly getting thrown at us? And why do you create? I expect a full essay from you all in the comment section. <laughs> All right. I love you guys so much. Thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for supporting the things that we do. I hope that it brought some value and some smiles to you today. Bye.